Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for bearing with us. I mean, you're supposed to add now, so I'd be very fast because I think there's another one after me or two. <laughs> so I presented yesterday the market booth on the uh, flood tools tracker catalog of EO Tech DefNet. I don't like acronyms, but anyway. Um, this is a catalog that basically shows you what's available out there for working with Earth observation data when it comes to disasters or looking at response with recovery at the whole disaster site. A lot of people don't know that are out there and working with floods, being managers, don't actually know what's available out there, what we are developing and using. So this network put together a catalog and I'm going to show you one event in India, I'm not going to show you an event in Kenya, because we are in Kenya. I'm very careful always where I talk about floods. I avoid talking about floods when local people are present. So I moved to the other side of the world, to India. So <laughs> there, was a, there was a big flash flood in the Kumali uh, region. And I don't know anything about these rivers. So let's call them Himalaya rivers. <laughs> um, what I do know is that that flash flood uh, destructed uh, two hydropower dams. And the flash floods were massive. Um, about 100 people killed and so on, and, and villages destroyed. And downstream was really a vast uh, flooding then taking place. And the question, people were wondering, what triggered this event? It was a sudden flash flood. And because it was so sudden, people were thinking, it is uh, a glacial lake outburst flood. But when the disaster charter was triggered, so this is one of the images, uh, just three days after uh, the, the dam destruction. So when the disaster charter was triggered, the disaster charter is one of the tools or one of the systems we mentioned in the flood uh, tools tracker. People were actually starting to use imagery that become available. So these included planet, very high resolution planet imagery. I'm gonna show you some analysis on the next slide. Images very high resolution from playouts, and then also Sentinel 2. So you're even able to analyze um, afterwards some um, what was happening with even lower resolution imagery. But the high resolution imagery came in very handy, of course. So these images became available through the charter and are available free of charge to anyone to analyze um, about, I think, up to three months after uh, the activation. And what it enabled in this case was actually to. Uh, to prove that it was not a glacial lake outburst flood, but it was rather uh, very high temperatures a couple of days before, causing uh, massive snow melt, which then caused snow melt uh, runoff. And this runoff just uh, went along a rock fracture already pre existing, and that triggered a massive rock ice failure, which then caused um, um, destruction of these dams. So it was essentially attributed to climatic changes in the region um, because these high temperature changes was, weren't experienced before. And this was only possible to establish because of the remote sensing data analysis. And this is one of the rare cases where really a lot of images were used to uh, understand, try to understand the event uh, rather than use it to respond or to help responding. So uh, here's uh, the planet analysis. I'm not going to go in detail, but it was um, used to um, find out the volume and the dimensions of this rock slide. So basically, just again, what I said yesterday in the market booth, the EOTAC DAFNET is basically promoting the collaboration of uh, EO capacity providers around the world. So the aim is basically to, to improve the collaboration between um, a lot of um, these capacity building initiatives that exist and really to reduce duplication of effort. There's a lot of people doing the same thing and it was decided to bring this all together and call it a network of networks and basically group it into, uh, into on the one hand, thematic working groups. So there are over a thousand people now active across the world, including Africa, Americas um, and Asia and Europe. And the themes are basically around floods, but droughts are coming as well. I mean, 
in, in the working groups. And then there's also climate adaptation coming at 2025, maybe. And then on the other hand, you've got the management team. And so the global structure, they call it management team that is trying to coordinate, get new, uh, get new partners involved and do a lot of outreach activity and communication. Um, just to end, uh, this is the catalog I presented yesterday for those that didn't have time to come to my booth, just check it out, it's really nice. And you can upload your own tool or other people's tool that is not there yet. And this is really uh, supposed to be just a catalog. So you can even put uh, payable tools or commercial tools there. You just have to be clear what, what is the license. So as I said, there's a lot of things on there people in this room know about. There's the DFO we heard from Albert yesterday. There's EFAS, GLOFAS uh, that we heard about from Irvin. And there's, um, for example, the disaster chart as well. And then there are GeoGloves is on there. So it really is a collection, a catalog to tell people what is available where. And you click on this and then you got a uh, go to the sources and so it's up to the provider of those tools to make sure the description is correct and actually the system um, can be used for different phases of the disaster cycle so whether mitigation preparedness response or recovery and you have to make sure when you want to upload your tool you give it a good description that's easy understandable you tell people what it can be used for and then provide the link how to access it and um, talk about licensing and etc um, so I think that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much. And here's a beautiful image. It doesn't happen very often, but I'm going to tell you the river. I think this is the Red River, the north in, in the US. And this is a beautiful image of Landsat. If it were always only that easy, then we wouldn't have a problem and we wouldn't be talking so much here. So thank you very much for your attention.